everyone, welcome to the last episode of Witticism. I'm Mary. And I'm Tyler, bringing you the news that matters most around the globe. A flight to Paris was halfway through its 90 minute journey when it was forced to make an emergency landing because one of its 166 passengers, who at some point took off his shirt and went into a rage because he wasn't allowed to smoke or drink alcohol on board. So to show his disapproval, he urinated on a fellow passenger. Now this man joins the no-fly list with so many of our favorite people, like the man who committed homicide because he was peed on by a drunk guy on an airplane. Poor, Ser poor Sergei of Dogaville, Latvia, was out for a late-night walk when he was viciously attacked by a furry buck-toothed menace. A beaver shot out of the bushes and bit into Sergei's leg, and then bit him again when he tried to get up. Since it didn't seem like he was going anywhere anytime soon, Sergei called rescue services, only to have them hang up on him thinking it was a prank call. Nice job. Sergei then tried calling his friend, who he ended up having to plead with as the friend also doubted the legitimacy of his peril. Said friend was then pulled over by the police on his way there for speeding, and he had to convince them that his friend was in real danger. Miraculously, they managed to reach Sergei to find that the big surprise, he was still being held hostage by one very agitated and stubborn beaver. After calling animal welfare, they were finally able to rescue poor Sergei, who ended up with 15 stitches in his leg, while the beaver was taken into custody for attempted homicide. Nah, I'm just kidding. Apparently beavers are protected in Latvia, so he was let go. 3. To roam the woods. A word of advice to the people of Latvia. Guard your children at night. Roberto Manginiello, an Italian mafia boss, was arrested this past week when an undercover agent disguised as a pizza delivery boy raided his apartment while Manginiello was watching sports. Said Manginiello, there was way too much bacon on that pizza, and then he pounded a beer and joined a frat. ISIS has taken more captives over the weekend, only this time it's not people, it's 7,000 gazelles. They pulled out of Rutba in western Iraq and are accused of drugging their wildlife reservation watering holes with sedatives and stealing the animals. It's believed they will be slaughtering them and using them for food when their food supply runs low. Personally, I think they took them to start the world's weirdest petting zoo. Or maybe that's just a personal fantasy of mine. <laughs> Two women were arrested after officials had to remove 38 cats from what they described as a filthy minivan. Officials say that the cats were living in the van in Atlanta, Georgia, and according to the officials, four of the cats are too sick to be adopted. However, 34 are ready for adoption, 12 of them are calico, and they're all mean as hell. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to buy some lemonade? I'm using it to buy myself a family. Poor nine-year-old Tristan Jacobson has started his own lemonade stand in order to pay for his adoption from his shelter. The woman who has been looking after him, named Donnie Davis, was not able to afford the legal fees, hence the lemonade stand. The goal was to reach 5,000, but they managed to reach a total of 14,000, probably setting a new world record for lemonade stand success rates. But I guess that's not hard to believe when the selling point is, so I can have a mommy again. Seriously, America's legal system, what the hell? The star of Canadian high school basketball team has been hiding a big secret, and it's not steroids. Jonathan Nicola, a 6'9", 210-pound basketball player, has been passing off as a 17-year-old junior, when in reality, he's just a 30-year-old grown man from South Sudan. I guess when you're 30 years old and your dream is to play basketball with a bunch of high schoolers, ball really is life. Well, it looks like we'll never have to change the batteries on our vibrator, uh, vibrate, vibrant colored clocks anymore because scientists have discovered how to make batteries last forever. And it was all an accident. They didn't even try. They've created a long-lasting battery that could change our lives forever. So naturally, they plan on keeping it locked away so it can never be manufactured and sold to consumers. Looking like a celebrity could actually have pretty damaging effects to your life, or in this case, your face. A New York City man, Mario Licato, was sucker punched in the face by an unidentified man, just, looking re just for looking relatively similar to Shia LaBeouf. And Shia LaBeouf truly isn't that horrible of a person to resemble. Just imagine what's going to happen to the guy that looks like Donald Trump. Belarusian rabbi Kaim Kaninivsky has announced that using marijuana during Passover is kosher, as long as it is used for medical reasons. Using it for recreational use, however, is still forbidden. Honestly, though, I'm not sure the rabbi would be so against recreational use if this was during the time of the first Passover. Even if you did put goat's blood over your door, you were probably still high-strung enough at the thought of deadly angels flying above you that a puff or two would have done you a real favor. A man in Washington, D.C. draped the American flag over him like a cape and then jumped the White House fence this week, then immediately surrendered. The reason for his jump is unknown. Although the jumping and the American flag draping, it is possible he was being an evil Knievel impersonator.
the city of Kaohsiung, Taiwan was having its annual war and air defense exercise when pictures of a lone dinosaur strolling down the street during the exercise started appearing on the internet. The perpetrator, known only as Cow, initially thought it would be a fun idea to roam a seemingly deserted town dressed as Godzilla's offspring. And he claims he didn't realize that it was illegal or that he would be arrested for it and he will likely be paying a hefty fine. But you know what the real issue here is? Dino discrimination. We have convinced our reptilian ancestors that the only time they can roam about freely is when the streets are devoid of people, much like my poor Uncle Bob. And even then, we arrest them. We must start spreading a message of peace and acceptance. Give us your scaled, your stubby armed, your gently challenged masses yearning to roam freely. New York City recently held their annual half marathon, where all the most fit runners come out to play. And this year, there is an unexpected runner. A 12-year-old girl ran and completed the marathon, but apparently it was on accident. When the parents were notified about the accident, they were almost as surprised as when they heard she accidentally swam to Hawaii. So every once in a while, men get kind of lonely and look for love on street corners where they find the most worthy women to spend their money on, if you know what I mean. And typically, after a night on the town, money is exchanged for sex. Well, in Nathan McLean's case, he paid with stolen Girl Scout money and a stolen monkey. The prostitute was okay with the monkey, though, because it's the only thing that ever enjoyed her company without paying for it. London recently opened the city's first nude restaurant. Some may be shocked at the concept of dining in the nude with strangers, but the restaurant already has a waiting list of over 25,000 people. Sources say that the reason nudity brought, was brought into the concept was so the diners would pay more attention to the flavors of their organic food. Sounds like a great time. Just don't bring your grandma. And that's all the time we have for tonight. I'm Mary. And I'm Tyler. You, you stay, stay beautiful, beautiful Indiana. Indiana. You too, Mary. <laughs> Eating healthy is something we all strive for. My name is Michelle Miller, and I'm a dietetic intern at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Through education and awareness, I'm going to show you the importance of healthy snacking without sacrificing your favorite flavors. like chips, try instead homemade apple chips. Apples are an excellent source of fiber and vitamins and minerals that we're all after. Just slice apples as thin as you can, sprinkle with cinnamon sugar, and bake in the oven at 200 degrees for two hours. After two hours, take your apple chips out of the oven and place them on the stove top to cool. This is what's going to cause them to harden and become crispy, crunchy, yummy snacks that you can enjoy as much as you like. For more ideas for healthy snacking, next time try apple chips instead of potato chips for more fiber and less fat. Instead of cookies, try homemade trail mix for a crunchy, sweet snack with fiber and omega-3s. And then for fresh vegetables, try dipping in hummus or Greek yogurt dip. For more healthy snack ideas, visit www.eatright.org. Hi guys, I'm Olivia. I'm Malik. I'm Tyler. And I'm Vicky. And here's what's going on in Hollywood this week. If you're a fan of Seth Rogen and shirtless Zac Efron, then you're in luck because Neighbors 2 Sorority Rising is hitting theaters May 20th. The original comedy was released back in 2014 and centered on Seth Rogen and his wife and newborn, who moved directly beside a fraternity house. The sequel will feature pretty much the same plot, but with, you guessed it, a sorority house beside them this time. Pretty original. Do you guys think this is going to be a good sequel or not worth it? And what other Seth Rogen movies would you guys want to see as a sequel instead? I think this is going to be a flop because, as you said, it's basically <laughs> the same plot line as the first Neighbors. It's just going to be a bunch of pranks, but with the sorority house. And it's going to just end up being the same exact movie. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same exact lines, both girls. Yeah, it's just going to be no. more party and more yeah. drinking. I nothing, disagree. Nothing disagree. Mm, no. Shirtless, Zac Efron. Just wow, I haven't seen that before. <laughs> but I feel like it might be kind of cool. I think it's like be a little in, and like a little empowering. Like the girls are like the crazy mm -hmm. ones for once. Yeah, like, I think not good. Well, yeah, I guess. But it's like it's Seth Rogen, so like it has to be good. Yeah, I Seth Rogen. All of his movies are good. But he's I so just funny. say this is gonna be a really similar plot line. I don't think there's gonna it's be a gonna lot be of room like, similar, to move away from that old movie. Similar, but different. We'll see. I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs>
Disney is going to make a sequel to Mary Poppins. And let's stop right there. No. Just no. There are things that should not be done, and this is one of them. You think the reason people loved the Disney classic so much was simply the story alone? Hell no! It was the musical numbers that did it. It was the acting, the color, the animation mixed with live action, which was still new at the time. It was the obvious suffering of David Tomlinson's character, Mr. Banks. It was Dick Van Dyke's rooftop dance. We loved his casting so much, we are willing to overlook the fact that he can't do an English accent to save his own life. And I don't care who they picked to, marry, to play Mary Poppins. Julie Andrews reinvented that character, and no one can replace Julie Andrews, who, by the way, is still alive, so it feels pretty strange to say that. This movie was so phenomenal, Disney recently made a film about making the film. Look, I know people love to reinvent movies and stories with their own twists, and sometimes these new interpretations are actually pretty good and great to watch. But this isn't even a reinvention, it's a sequel. How can you possibly hope to attempt this sequel? Seriously, whoever it is working at Disney that thinks taking their old movies and dissecting them to death needs to be told to stop already. You're wasting countless amounts of money on something no one is going to like or remember six months from now. Please don't do this. Are you all on board with me or would you like to see this movie as a sequel? Hmm. No. Yeah, it's not going to be good as a sequel, but it depends on which way they take it. Because if they still follow Mary Poppins, there's no way that Julie Andrews is going to be able to reprise that role as well if she did it the first time because she just had throat surgery just like Adele. Sorry about that. <laughs> just like Adele. But her throat surgery didn't end up being as successful as Adele's, so she can't hit all the notes that she used to be able to. But if they take it in a different direction and follow the kids that uh, Mary Poppins nannied, I think it might have a little bit of potential to be an okay movie, but it won't be as good as a movie as the original Mary Poppins by far. It's going to end up like Grease too. Just it's absolutely. Not, that's a good point. It is, but worse. Yeah, way worse. I wouldn't be hard with they would have made it live. Yeah. I just don't think it's there's just some things that shouldn't be touched and Mary yeah. Poppins is absolutely one of them. It doesn't need to be fixed. Exactly. Like Disney it's keeps trying to fix Leave things. It. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, over it. Have new things. <laughs> don't don't come out with old things that you're trying to like make better cuz it's just it's not going to happen. I agree. It's going to be embarrassing. After a year and a half long feud, all time rivals Kylie Jenner and Black China are now apparently friends again. The two posed together in a mirror pic and Kylie snapped the picture of her story with the caption, we've been friends this whole time. <laughs> Weird because Kylie is dating Black China's baby daddy and Black China is dating Kylie's brother, which makes Rob the uncle of his girlfriend's son. Sounds like a great start to that friendship. What do y'all think? Is it good that they made up, or are some people just not meant to be friends? I don't think they're even friends right now. I think Kylie is lying <laughs> from the beginning. It's so they're, passionate. There is no way. Did you just hear yourself say that they did like horrible things to each other? Kylie's dating Black China's baby daddy. I don't think you should be friends with the girl who is dating your child's father. Like, if you don't like the father, don't like the woman that he's but hanging out with. But then she's dating... The brother yeah. of his of her like yeah, girl I still and stole her I man. Don't like, see each other at family reunions it's so and weird. Thanksgiving. I, I would still be clawing it. at her throat. Same. I just it is really weird. And I just recently saw that Black China and Kim were hanging out together. Yeah, I saw that. That's so. That's just weird. the whole family is They're weird. Just like really, in, it's just very incestual. This like just keeps it just the the whole Kardashian clan just keeps getting better and better. It just. Weirder. It's just weirder and <laughs> weirder just it weirder. doesn't make sense to me. I just I like I don't understand how Kylie is like okay with it. Like if I had an ex, I don't want to see you with your new girl. Like I don't want to yep. No. Like what? That's so weird. I just it's weird. It's, it's a little it's especially so taking a Snapchat in a mirror. That's not the way to rekindle your friendship. Like yeah. maybe write a note to each well, other. Oh, maybe if you're a Kardashian text. it is. Oh, I guess right. you're right. Or maybe mm -hmm. give her a wig. It's Kylie. Wig, or lip injections, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. yeah. Well I guess, you know, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. Clearly. Mm -hmm. And all in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Comedians Chelsea Pretty and Jordan Peele eloped over the weekend. The couple ran away together and the only witness to the union was their dog dressed in a Hawaiian shirt. The couple have been dating for two years and recently were featured in booking.com ads looking at destination wedding ideas. And in one ad, called off the wedding because getting in shape was too hard. We're glad to hear they went through with the wedding. What do you guys think of eloping? Is it something you would ever do, or would you want a traditional wedding? I would want a traditional wedding. Um, I don't really know the two people, but 
Who wants to just get married by themselves when they're talking to Hawaii? <laughs> dog with a Hawaiian shirt. I don't know. I'm about so it. Funny. Like, I'm about that. I would definitely elope if there was a dog with a Hawaiian shirt there. And plus, they're celebrities. They don't have time to plan out the entire traditional wedding and stuff. They're both have the. Uh, they're both on TV shows. Jordan Peele is on Keem Peele on Comedy Central, and Chelsea Peretti is on Brooklyn Nine Nine on Fox. And that is it's just a lot of work <laughs> to put into the shows and plan a wedding at the same time. So I feel like they took the easy way out and eloped, which is it's the easy way out, but it's also the right thing to do at that moment in their yeah. life. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be married, like, it's the same thing. Just you're not being so flashy mm -hmm. and whatever and have all your family that everyone that loves you wants to see you get married. But, you they know, have their whatever. dog. That's all they yeah. need. They're it's like, just like whatever you want to do, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Beyonce proved once again that she is queen of everything by dropping another visual surprise album on HBO, followed by the release of the album on Tidal and Apple 24 hours later. In the video, which is more like a movie, she calls out Jay-Z for his cheating, lying, and shades the dusty side hose he was seeing behind her back. All I have to say is, if Jay-Z was cheating on Queen B, then there is no hope for the rest of us. Did anyone see the video? And can you believe this, or do you think it was set up for like fame and publicity? I can believe it. Same. Like, oh my God, who, what's her sister's name again? Solange. When she like slapped him in the Beat elevator. The, yeah. Hello, <laughs> now it all makes sense. I know. You should not cross Queen B. I feel like Jay Z. <laughs> he's a dead man. I think. Like the, she's gorgeous. Like what, what? What am I supposed to do? Like, and also um, phenomenally. I've talented. watched. Yeah. I've actually watched the uh, the premiere movie thing, but like it was based on like previous like. That was like mm -hmm. two years ago. Like he cheated on her like two years ago, and like basically she was just saying how like the stages she went through, like anger, emotions, forgiveness, and like they're good now, mm -hmm. but yeah. But maybe it's like you know, you can applaud them for having a relationship where it's like she still feels comfortable to like release an entire yeah. album like discussing it. I disagree yeah. with cheating, but I mean, True. yeah, that's, that's, that's hard to come. bounce back from that. Yeah, but that's where songs come. Uh, good songs come from is like yeah. True. Well, long experience. Long and she's True been stories. with him yeah. since she was what twenty one. Like, who else would she be talking about or something? Yeah, yeah, they've been together for a really long time. I don't know why I just whispered, but like, <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That was oh a my point gosh. she had to keep to herself. Right there. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> The How I Met Your Mother grad is in negotiations to star a Netflix adaptation of the best-selling children's book, A Series of Unfortunate Events, the tale of orphaned children Violet, Klaus, and Sonny, Bold of Flair, who find themselves in the villainous clutches of an evil uncle named Count Olaf, played by Neil Patrick Harris, who has desires of their family fortune. What do you guys think? Is the series going to be binge-worthy, and do you think Neil Patrick Harris is the right choice for Count Olaf? Definitely going to be binge-worthy, yes. <laughs> so but I, cannot, I do not know when it comes out because they didn't release the dates yet, but as soon as I find out, I'm marking my calendar in that entire weekend, week, month, it's just going to be repeat <laughs> of a series of unfortunate events. And Neil Patrick Harris, he's a great actor. He played oh, yeah. uh, Barney so well on How I Met Your yes. Mother. I feel like he, can, he's, he has a lot of range to play Count yeah. Olaf with how villainous he's going to be. He's also a really good mover and very theatrical, which mm -hmm. is what Count Olaf was. And I think that there was a really big miss with the like last movie that they tried to oh, do. Definitely. I think it'll be way better as like a Netflix series. Yeah, because there's way too many stories to pound into one movie. Mm -hmm. This series is gonna keep going. It's just gonna get so good, and I'm gonna <laughs> just watch it so much. Netflix is really coming out with a lot of good well, stuff. Yeah, like, I really, agree. I'm excited with Netflix. Well, right honestly, now. if you can't find Tyler for like two months, you know where he is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Next semester, I'm just gonna be gone. <laughs> the newest discriminatory fad is targeting transgendered people and their bathroom use. Many people are protesting the idea that trans people use the bathroom according to the gender they identify with instead of the sex they were born as. People are claiming that trans women who were born men only use the women's bathroom with the intent to molest young girls, even though there are no reported cases. What does everyone think? Should they be able to use the bathroom they identify with or should they be forced to use the bathroom according to the sex they were born with? Um, this has been something that's been going on for years. years. And I really think that if you change your sex, like if you were born a man and then you change it to a woman, you should be able to use the women's bathroom. I agree. Like it's not, you shouldn't think, oh, he's going to go in there and rape little girls. Like that's just but absurd. It's a fear tactic. I mean, there's yeah. been ads about it that are absolutely absurd and the ads portray it as like a man in like a trucker outfit claiming he's a woman washing his hands. I was like, have you met any trans person who has ever exactly. appeared that way? It's I feel, like, I feel like you should be able to use the bathroom with the gender that you identify I with. I agree. And I feel like there shouldn't be no fear. Like, they, it's yeah. been commercialized, like you said, but I feel like there should be no fear that the kids are going to get molested. Because if there's people out there that do want to molest kids, they're not going to let, like, gender 
uh, stereotypes they're gonna stop get, them Yeah, they're going like, to go in the bathroom in. anyway and still right. molest a child. Like, it doesn't matter. And why do you care? Like, who cares? You know right. what I mean? Like, you won't even know. Yeah, but you don't, exactly. not, you don't just take up a conversation with people in the bathroom. You just go in and use the bathroom yeah. and leave. Exactly. exactly. Like, I just, I just, people are stupid. It, honestly, that is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the news out of Hollywood. I'm Olivia. I'm Malik. I'm Tyler. And I'm Vicky. And now here's Mary with her weekly advice. people out there who care. Verbal abuse is the most continuous form of abuse that follows you, but it doesn't have to. No need to be one of the 3.2 million students bullied each year. Speak out and seek help. Let's end bullying together. Hey guys, welcome to the last advice with the one and only me. I've received so many letters this week, so let's just get started. Dear Mary, my name is Ladasha. Spell with a dash. I know that it looks like La Hyphena, but it really Ladasha. My ex boyfriend want me back, and I don't know what to do. We broke up recently because he was cheating on me, but I know it was just an accident, so I forgave him. He explained to me that the girl he worked with was coming on to him, and he didn't want to be a jerk and say no because that would have been rude. So they hooked up, and it wasn't a big deal. It was nothing serious, so like whatever. And I know he don't have feelings for her, so I look past it. And then, a few months ago, I was at the Texas Roadhouse with my mother, and I ran into them chowing down on their house salads and filet mignons. Okay, wait, I just, I just want to say that it's filet mignon. It's not, if that's what you're trying to say, it's not filet mignon. They're not flaming hot Cheetos. It's filet mignon. Okay, um, where was I? <laughs> okay. Um, it was so embarrassing and disrespectful. He had never taken me on a date before, so seeing him in public really threw me off because I only really see him in his apartment at night. Since I figured out they had been going on dates and hanging out several of times, I had known it was time for me to break up with him. I was really stern about it and dumped him flat out. I've remained really strong about the whole situation for two whole weeks, but recently he'd been texting me like, oh baby, I want you back, and I'm sorry I was at the Texas Roadhouse with that woman, and like I honestly believe him and really want to make things right again. I think I was too hard on him, but now it's my chance to make things right. What do you think? Thanks, Ladasha. Hey, Ladasha. How is it not blaringly obvious that you aren't his girlfriend? You're the side chick. I hate to be the one to tell you that, but clearly no one else will, and you asked for this. I mean, put the pieces together, girl. He's never taken you out on a date. That's the first red light in this entire mess, and you only ever see him at night? Another sign that you are a side hoe because he clearly only wants to hook up with you. I mean, truly, this is pathetic, and so is your pronunciation of filet mignon. Please do yourself a favor and stop seeing him. But if you want to tell people you broke up with him because it'll make you sleep at night, I won't hold it against you. Dear Mary, my name is Caroline. I submitted a letter back to you in December about my best friend being pregnant. Well, I took your advice and got pregnant with her, and both of our parents disowned us and refused to pay for our college education. Now we're living in our Uber driver's basement trying to find our own place to live. Pretty much what I'm saying here is that you ruined our lives. Thanks for nothing. Oh, Caroline, 
so sorry to hear about the news, but your life isn't ruined, it's just beginning. The more struggles you go through, the more you'll learn about how life just isn't fair. Didn't your parents tell you that? And by the way, I'm not some licensed therapist. You didn't have to take my advice. But the fact that you did is really sweet. I'll always remember you, Catherine. Or was it Carolyn? I honestly don't care. Dear Mary, I'm graduating in less than two weeks and I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. And not only that, but I'm not ready to leave this place and my friends and especially Romeo's ranch. I could literally drink that stuff. Like I'm pretty sure they make it with liquid crack. Anyways, how am I supposed to do real life with real responsibilities? I can't even make a doctor's appointment by myself. This is all just so overwhelming. What if, I, what if I have to live in my parents' basement until I'm 26? What if my degree is totally useless and I never find a job in the field that I've been studying for for the past four years? What if I fail and my dad never tells me he's proud of me? Is there anything you can say to me to give me some hope for the future? I really need some advice. Thanks, Brittany. Oh, Brittany, it's totally normal to be freaking out and feeling all these emotions so close to graduation. I get it. The real world is scary, but chill out. Everything will fall into place, I promise. Number one, the last thing you need to be worried about is growing distant from your friends. I mean, with the 15 different social media sites there are, you'll be able to see what they're doing and saying literally 24 hours a day. Two, no ranch as good as Romeo's exists in this world. You should have accepted that a while ago. And three, I can't really reassure you about getting a job or not. Either you could completely fail or become super successful. You have a 50-50 shot. So good luck and start making some connections because that's really the only thing that will help you get a job. All right, y'all, well, that's actually all the time I have for letters tonight. And now we're going to turn the tables and I'm going to read a letter for all of you. Dear Witticism Crew, thank you all so much for your hard work over the last two semesters. We made 20 episodes this year. How crazy is that? I don't want to get too mushy and sentimental, but I'm going to because why the heck not? I want to thank my co-producers, Vicky and Jim, for making me a producer after my first semester. It has been quite a ride. Also, shout out to our best crew member, Christina. You're my idol, my savior, my rock, everything I hope to be in life, God's gift to earth, like everything. Um, <laughs> honestly, you're the reason why we have episodes at the end of each week. I want to thank our writers, Valerie, Vicky, Haley, Sadlock, Olivia, Tyler, and Mary Clark. Your sense of humor is rock, and you're always willing to write funny and offensive things. It's great. Um, thanks to our talent, Mary, who's been with us the whole year, and also... The second semester noobs, Tyler, Haley, Jay, and Malik, you guys really saved our asses and came at a time when all of our honor talent decided to leave us for some weird reason. Um, also shout out to the, first, to the rest of our crew who help with the technical aspects, Amber, Cassie, Haley, Bush, Ariana, and Sam occasionally. We couldn't have done it without all of you. And to the seniors, Valerie, who never shows up, shout out to you, Valerie. Um, and Vicky, of course, I love you. <laughs> I'm going to miss you so much, and I'm so sad that you won't be returning. But to the rest of the other crew members, I hope to see all of your beautiful, shining faces for another year of being on the best show of IUP TV. And with that being said, Mary out. <laughs>